I want to start this video by saying that of the last few years that Wizards of the Coast has put out different source books and adventures, I'd say this is my favorite thing they've come out with in the last few years. Um, you're going to hear us gush about it. If you want to stop the video, that's fine. <laughs> you know, that's uh, totally I mean, what we're going to, I don't, it's not, at least I haven't found too many flaws with this book. No. Um, it's, it's, it's great. It's, I, I wish, if there's one thing I'm angry about, is that I wish this came out when 5e came out. Now, just to let viewers know, I didn't pick up it, Into Eberron in 3rd edition. 3rd edition was the one edition of D&D that I just totally skipped over. At that time, I was so many, I was into so many different gaming systems. I just, and I was so uh, broke, not brokenhearted. I was just, uh, second edition, there's so many complicated and unnecessary rules and source books. I just didn't want to deal with second edition ever again. I didn't want to, even think about doing another edition of D&D at the time, which I'm sad that I, I chose that because this, um, everyone originally came it's out during edition of stuff, and yeah. I, I feel like I missed a totally great section of books. You have a variety, you, you have one world with a variety of landscapes. And I know that's a weird thing to say because like almost any book has, you know, mountains and maybe volcanoes and then like a, a cold area, but um, th this book very much also helps you define the areas in ways that uh, one of the uh, the main city, Sharn, is very much like a metropolis kind of area mm. that um, has very sci-fi, very like maybe a even like a little steampunk, but very sci-fi in that it's like everything's magic. There are giant screens from illusions being all over the place, so it gives you that like I haven't. Uh, I don't want to like narrow it to any specific area for like a dungeon master who wants to like make it their own, but like it's it's very sci-fi there where they describe uh, like off parts of the world, different countries. But one they described it as being very western-like, and when you read it, it does give that like settlers feel. Hmm. Um, and then it, it, like certain areas, which I think we're gonna probably gush about too, uh, like the morning, it gives very like nightmare, almost like horror type feel. So like if you have like a group of people that have. A specific love of like a genre like if you have western fans who want to be gunslingers or in this case like wand slingers mm. you got people who can do that if you got people who want to like creep around and like have be stalked by crazy aberrations and creatures you can do that you can do so much with this yeah yeah i, I feel like forgotten realms is a great collection of, of classic fantasy tropes while eberron is the, a great collection of modern fantasy tropes you know it's That's a good way I, it. I i was Feeling like a little bit of Firefly, um, uh, Harry Potter, yeah. um, uh, steampunk, yeah. oh, like tons of steampunk a lot stuff. Of steampunk. Uh, they just had this great war. Um, the civilization is trying to pick themselves back up. There's new like uh, countries and 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 uh, groups of power, uh, people of power. Um, but what I what I love about it is that there's there like it's a very magic infused world. You, there's like there's trains that are powered by magic. There's floating cities. The mage rights people you can hire who just do magic for like utilitarian purposes. Yes, like it's, it's not even like not everyone who does magic is an adventurer. Some of them just do mending for a living. So they're just their expertise is using the cantrip mending, and yes. they just fix things, and that's that's their whole job. But you know what? It's a cantrip, so like you pay 20, 20 gold to have someone like mend your entire outfit um oh the outfits the uh glimmer weaves i think they were called yes. were, were crazy because that gave me um hunger games feel yeah um like the outfits from hunger games were like it was very much hey show us your district actually the districts kind of make sense for this too yeah, where, it's yeah. Just, where it's just like hey dress a fire and one of the ones they recommend or they uh a note is the uh glimmer i believe it's glimmer weave um i may be uh saying it wrong but they, the outfits, um, especially if you get like illusion magic done onto them, like you could have an outfit that's like a, like a, say a flowing dress that's like um, plants. So like you just have like small like honeysuckles and like uh, daffodils growing off of you all, at all times. Like they're not real, but it makes your characters get a chance to really define their look, which is kind of really cool. Yeah. So let's talk about. Um... Usually, when every person picks up a source book, they want to know new classes, yep. new races. Uh, should we talk about the new races first? Yeah, I'm down for that. So they reintroduce a lot of the races again into fifth edition in this book. Um, let's talk a little bit about changelings, uh, which um, I have to say, in other role playing systems, I always fear the changeling because I feel like player characters tend to abuse that a little mm -hmm. bit. Like, you know, like oh, I'll be a dwarf today, or I'll be an elf today. But I really like 
that they incorporated a lot of um, uh, different mythos into this. Uh, what do you think? Um, I love Ch- I played one uh, before this came out. I actually got to play one, and like I just love Changelings as a whole. Hmm. Um, with the background they give, uh, and we won't go too much into it because you don't want to ruin that, but that they are very a very fluid person in general. So they have one name that's usually one very gender neutral. So for anyone who likes something like that, uh, they usually don't have a defined gender and uh, can switch between as they want, especially. Uh, you know, races and stuff. Um, I believe there's a limitation on height change and, like, I think weight change. Mm. So you can only go so far either way. But that, like, as a normal size, let's say, person, that still leaves human, elf, mm. like, half orc, half elf. <laughs> that leaves so, so many uh, triton, sea elf. Like, that just is so, that's so much that you can still do. And um, if you, uh, I think the reason you probably remember people cheating is because if you get something like, uh, I forget what the outfit's called. I think it's called the glamour armor that mm. changes like for for like a bonus action. Yeah. Imagine you're a changeling with armor that changes. You just <laughs> like when, whenever you want, you're a different person entirely, and like that's that's great, but also uh, very crazy. Um, my favorite part is a portrait in here, which shows a changeling just looking at a um, a painting, and then they're just like, oh yeah, and then you just see them like half begin to transform into the person, and like. That's what I love about it, and, the, and you can understand why, like, charisma is, like, one of their big stats, mm. because, like, all about being another person, and, like, imitating another person, and having this weird ability that, like, I forget how they defined it, that it came across, but it, but having this ability was, like, it wasn't, like, a blessing, it was, like, a curse, and, like, people mistrust changelings as a whole yeah. um, because of this. Um, oh, one thing. Related to that, actually, that I remember reading that I wanted to mention. Can I interrupt? Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Um, that uh, in the beginning, they specifically define that just because a character's or any even monster's race or uh, type or species uh, is specifically good or evil, that's not necessarily the case here. Um, and certain traits that you would expect from a character, so the example they give is a dwarf knowing dwarvish, it doesn't technically exist. Yeah. Um, it's kind of like, uh, say, an Irish person coming over from Ireland and living in America. Yeah. You don't technically know Irish. You might still be Irish, but it doesn't mean you know how to you know, speak Gaelic. Orcs, hobgoblins, bugbears, goblins uh, are now... Um, although they, you could be player racist with them before, according yeah. to the Monster Manual, but now they're... Not only are they available in, in Eberron, but now they have a... They're, they're, uh, there's a formation where they, they're part of that Very society. Detailed. Yeah. I will say there is one thing that I didn't like about this book, and it is related to those races. Mm. Um, I love the races in general, um, and, and like I understand every race has an advantage and disadvantage, because that's just the way they, they work. Um, I didn't like that, um, and I think the only reason it wasn't included was because, you know... You have these new races, but you got to give the older races like some a unique feel. So yeah. that's why um, the dragon marks hmm. seem to stick mainly to dwarves. No, basically, any race from the original fifth edition release seemed to get a dragon mark of some sort, which allowed that to be like a very unique subclass for them. Where uh, orcs, goblins, hobgoblins, uh, even warforged, I believe none of them. Maybe warforged would be hard to have that as an option because it's not like an inheritance thing. But like, I mean, goblins. Orcs breed like and yeah. they they weren't like they didn't have the option. I I guess because they were they're still considered sort of like the less civilized race in certain aspects that maybe it just wouldn't be a thing that comes up. But that disappointed me because like humans have five different dragon marks. Yeah, <laughs> all goblinoids got zero. Yeah. <laughs> That was the only thing, but, like, the builds are great, like, and the fact that, like, you can finally, like, officially be, like, an orc or a goblin and be something beyond what people would normally assume you as, like, it just, uh, a goblin, maybe you're a goblin that works in the city and you're an artificer, um, <laughs> and you're actually very intelligent despite what people may not think. Yeah. No, I agree with you. I thought it was kind of strange. Um, I do like that they have dragon marks. Maybe in a future source book they'll kind of expand that a little bit yeah uh but i in concept though i do like the idea of uh, these new sub races that are not created because of genetic reasons but magical reasons yeah. you know again it's, it's it seems like magic is the science of this world exactly and it's 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 um it's everywhere <laughs> it powers everything Literally. and it's now even used as almost like a birthmark in a sense yep. as well um Warf- 
Um, Warforged. Warforged. <laughs> uh, I, I, I hesitated only because I don't know if I want to skip that ahead. But, True. But Warforged is my favorite of the reintroduced races that yes. they they put in the book, and um, I don't know. This, I, I I was hesitant at first. Again, it's what's great about everybody. Kind of like it's not your class classic trope fantasy. Mm -hmm. So the idea of having some sort of like robots in fantasy to me is like that's that's like almost almost heretical. Yeah. <laughs> but uh but again it, Eberron it, the world it's it's constructed that every all these races fit together so wonderfully. Mm -hmm. Um and uh Warforge is becoming now becoming my favorite uh, yeah. of all the uh, stuff that they put out so far. I agree. I the and especially because they give a really good history for that too. Yeah. And um, you have the Warforge, which like a PC can be, or even if you have NPCs. So like there are quote unquote basic ones. Obviously, as you level up, yours becomes more heroic, more advanced. But like you can just be a normal one that's humanoid size. They have and you have larger ones, which get introduced <laughs> later on. And um, uh, ones that are basically bases like yeah. living bases and i lo love the way that they did that but having the character race for it just especially with the kind of the, the little bit of background they give you for mm -hmm. the being like you could be could have been a servant you could have been you were an invention for a war this giant war that went on and now the war doesn't exist and you mm -hmm. you can find your own purpose and like yeah. that, that's great that's such a it's not like it's kind of like a warrior coming home type thing where like you now like have a reason to find your own purpose in a, in a world after total mayhem yeah one of the races i also liked um and you said related to like the lore is like like lycanthropy uh you know mm. um was a big thing in eberron and uh because of like just inheritance and a lot of these some of these come from inheritance the shifter races mm. um having the ability to be more uh can almost canine like where you're like made for hunting and then you have other ones that are more bestial and like rough so they're like they're based off of more of like a boar or like a bear mm. and like so like even with shifters like you like this one race has i think four sub races yeah that like you can define just like a little bit more about like what what this character came from and like it's a it's a nice little spin off of lycanthropy but it, like instead of just full on being like a werewolf or like a wereboar or a werebear or a were rat or a were <laughs> um, uh, you you you're a humanoid that like yeah. you know you have this thing happen and just, just it's built into you but that doesn't mean you're bad just like everything else in here it's you know it's just part of who you are. What are your thoughts about Kalashtar? I they're so different Very of all the races. <laughs> they, they're not like um, I mean they're from the. Uh, dream dimension is um i think they're i think their backgrounds like being having this secondary voice in your head that for the most part almost all of them again eberron and like world in general like you can make it your own but the way that they kind of define the kalashtar was very much you have a secondary voice of good in you mm -hmm. at all time that's kind of giving you this push in a specific direction i would say like well, one way is if you have a group that you know likes to lean a little chaotic, maybe even a little chaotic evil, and you have a Kalashtar in that group, maybe they can also be like the driving force towards like good goals. But I think the Kalashtar having this secondary voice um, just kind of leads to uh, having like almost like a commune with the magic that like mm. kind of takes up the entire world, anyways. Which I think is kind of fun. Yeah. Also, like stat wise, I know we try not to go super into the stats. The fact that you just get advantage in all wisdom saving throws is baller. <laughs> 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 it feels like cheating, but yeah. I just think it's amazing. <laughs> so let's talk about the class, the yes. one new class, <laughs> and um, actually, this first new class ever in Five E, if yeah. I remember correctly. Officially, that, yeah. Officially, it's not homebrewed or yeah. anything like that. The artificer. Yeah. Um, personally, I love it. Yeah. I love uh, it. It's it's so different. Um, it's it's creative, which I'm worried always worried about when new classes come in that they're very just like this one note. Yeah. Um, creation. This but, is very much not. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It is. So much, I like. Uh, there's this one image in there with the artificer with his robotic dog. Yep. And I just thought I saw it. And I was like, oh, I would love to make a backstory yep. to that. You know. That would be great. Uh, developers, listen to you guys. Um, <laughs> you, you want artificer and you want artificer to be awesome, and they were like, let's make three archetypes. Um, <laughs> But yeah, I I loved what they did with all three because, um, you know, so like officially you have, uh, ranger which is like the half caster for wisdom type. You have paladin which is the half caster for, 
uh, charisma type and mm -hmm. intelligence, which always gets the butt end of the stick, except with the new Unearthed Arcana that's coming out. Um, <laughs> I like intelligence always kind of just gets that butt end, and Artificer was that half caster that I think if you wanted to play an intellectual that wasn't pure magic that had like put the potential that was like you have so many options with it, and it's just really nice to have that. Like with the three different uh, subclasses, you can. Uh, you have Artificer, so if you want to be more of that, like, buff debuff, like, traps, like, like weird weird stuff, you can do that. But, like, you also have uh, the Artillerist, I think it was called, um, which was, like, range fighting. So if you want to be, like, a ranged archer intelligence person with, mm. like, little the little uh, uh, cannon guys that you can have come out, you can yeah. do that. And then the one that you talked about, the battle... The battlesmith that had like the giant hammer and the yeah, the, the robotic war dog, dog. the yeah. robotic war dog, uh, you can go full melee and like they give you so much versatility with that alone. That then all like the crazy little like tinkering and like infusion stuff is so good to have. Yeah, it's fantastic. What's great about the world building, in my opinion, is that they just don't tell you about like, hey, there's, there's a university here or there's a there's a, a secret spy organization there. They don't tell you just about it. They tell you how you could join it, yeah. how your characters can join it, the patron stuff. That that's really good. I, they they do a really good job in trying to get give you give the dungeon master ideas mm -hmm. so that you can um, bring this world to life. Mm -hmm. I feel you know. So it's so there's there's, just, oh, there's just so much possibilities. We should clarify: patrons are not the patrons of warlock class. Yes. Uh, of the warlock class. These patrons specifically are sort of like I would say if you were. A football player, and you get sponsored by somebody. They're, they're, they're your sponsors. I think sponsors would have also been a good word choice. Yeah. But like, I understand that patrons fits the dialogue better. Yeah. Um, it's like you work for an organization, like a specific one, and like, uh, like you said, those were, those are great. That they had them like again, university great. But like, my favorite was the newspaper. You yeah. could work for a newspaper, and they're like, "You're hard hitting detectives." Was their opening line for it? I'm like, "Yes, <laughs> yes. Give me an excuse to be a hard hitting rogue that's going around trying to figure out the scoop." Yeah. Like, like, I'm gonna give this my highest rating. If there is a highest rating on this, you know, uh, it's it, if if you have to get the player's handbook, if you have to get the Dungeon Master's Guide and the Monster Manual, get this book this as well. This is a really you know, great edition. You, you don't need a book for classic fantasy, but this book I think is is necessary. It gives you so much possibilities. No, it does. It, re it really does. Um, I, mean, I don't know. Maybe we do like a Tiamat rating, so it's like it's five heads out of five heads. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, give this, we'll give this five. No, bad oh, idea. Okay. No, no, no. I like, I like that idea a lot. That's actually that's actually really clever. I like that. Yeah. So we're giving this. I'm gonna give this my highest rank. Five, <laughs> five tier of the heads out of five tier of the heads. It's it's to me it's it's it's, it's near perfect. It I, is great. I if I had to choose one book after the main three to get, it's this one. No, this one and like if nothing else, reading it would give you so many ideas. Like mm -hmm. like if you were uh, running uh, like a water deep campaign, or if you were doing any of the Tiamat stuff, mm -hmm. or Avernus, like any of that stuff, just reading this, like, just think about introducing dragon marks while you're trying to do, um, uh, like, the rise of Tiamat, like mm -hmm. where dragon marks like would like define you a little more. One, they're called dragon marks. Yeah. They mean they weren't. I don't think they necessarily have to be related to anything draconic. But like, imagine like you're trying to fight against these people trying to bring a dragon to life, and like you show them this mark. Like, it's just the idea of having these little extra details that you could have in like these other uh, fantasy genres is great. But like, I could all. I would love to play in Sharn. Like that, yeah. that that city itself just screams to just be explored, and yeah. I love that. The the Mornland, formerly Sire. Um, I, I love the fact that there's a country that is so riddled with chaos that it's pretty much a, 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 a country sized dungeon. Yep. You know, there's there's tons of great treasure there, but uh, the the idea of, of of living spells, a living fireball spell coming after you, yes. sounds like a oh, horrible horrible thing. I've not mentioned those yet. Those were great. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, gr horrible for players, but great, great for them. Yeah, living, living <laughs> burning hands, living lightning bolt, I think, are the yeah. ones that they, they showed. Yeah, and that like, just, the, that's so good. Yeah, <laughs> imagine, like, your, your, your player characters are seeing this this cloud kill coming away, this living cloud yes. kill spell. You know, that just, it's like, how, how do, do I, how do, yeah, it's like, how do I kill this? Yeah. <laughs> do I use the spell? Doesn't work. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I, guess we're fight, I guess we're fighting, like, an... Unphysical, in, unphysical, an ethereal like force of nature, yeah. basically, and that's what it is. Magic basically becomes its own force of nature here, which is like really great. Um, uh, one of the other things that they find is because 
like where the Mornland is, like, and then they were like the center city of it, like had like so much technological advances going on before yeah. this happened. They're like, hey, yeah, go to the center city. That's where all the fun toys are. Hmm. Have fun. Don't die along the way. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and it's like they're challenging you, but they're also like, you don't have to go there. But like, it's like you could find a giant colossus house that yeah. you can ride in and live in. Um, but yeah, I do like bringing the spells to life. It's yeah, just that's great. That was really clever, but yeah, this 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 world has so many like introduced so many different like uh, kingdoms and lands. Um, and then the, the houses, ha the houses is also. Um, uh, you wanted to mention about the dragon mark. Yeah, the, the dragon marks in general, we didn't go super into detail, but um, they they are defined. Certain races get that, so like humans get a few gnomes, elves, and dwarves. I think maybe one other one that I'm missing, but for the most part, like these certain ones get these um, dragon marks, which are inherited and instead of being like say instead of being a mountain dwarf or like a um a hill dwarf you yes. are instead are a dragon marked dwarf and that's like your defining feature being part of this whole family line and like you with these different classes like you could have a whole group of people all have dragon marks that are like official houses which um these houses with these abilities were able to kind of like profit off of the war and then kind of just became not an empire but like they control enough of the world that they're very well known and high up, which is which I think is great to have like these people who again just profited off the war by using their inherent abilities that they just yeah. have. And then um, what was what was the part? Uh, uh, we never talked about the aberrant dragon mark either. Yeah, uh, yeah. The thirteenth option. That was that was a cool a cool addition where like you know sometimes you may have something that's corrupted mm -hmm. and it does different effects outside yes. of the norm. Yeah, <laughs> um, but that's really cool uh, that they allowed that so that players could customize just their characters bit. some more. You know, I also give it five heads, uh, five team on heads because I, <laughs> I I loved it too. Uh, I honestly there are so many parts that alone I would have given them five for, but like together as a book, it's just so good. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's a great addition. I do recommend it. Again, I warned you at the beginning of the video that we're going to gush about this book. Yep. Did you pick this up? Let us know what you think in the comments. Have you played this before? What should we check out? Because I want to play this world. <laughs> uh, is there any like third edition or maybe even fourth edition books that we recommend that, that, will, that will help flesh us out? Because I would love to explore more and talk more about this Definitely. in future episodes. Let us know. So, thank you very much for watching. And we'll see you soon. See ya.